K Emphasis provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com. Sublet. Okay. Example. And your sublet class, if you whenever you create a sublet, it has to extend your HTTP sublet. If you remember when we spoke about uh, creating a thread, your thread has to ultimately extend your thread class. Otherwise, it has to implement a runnable, runnable interface. So the same way, in order to create a sublet, you have to extend that sublet to your HTTP sublet. Okay. And the class name I'm just saying here is hello sublet. Okay. Um, that's all. Just say next. And this is my URL mapping. So we'll talk about what is this URL mapping. If you remember when we spoke about accessing your uh, web pro hello.html, I can just say hello.html. This is the complete URL with the help of which I'm able to access this HTML. Okay. The same way in order to uh, access my hello servlet, okay, I have to say hello servlet in the URL out here. Okay. This name, I can just edit this and just say hello. Let's say just hello. students okay so next okay now in this case uh, we will talk about uh, okay let's talk about the do get and do push or otherwise there are a lot of different service methods also we'll talk about this one by one okay so no worries so just say finish okay so when i do this what happens a servlet and ultimately a java file gets created what is the Java file? Let's see one by one. Uh, you have got public class hello servlet extends your HTTP servlet. That's what you have specified when you created this servlet. Okay. And you're saying this that it is a web servlet by giving this as an annotation. All right. So this is your annotation that is your web servlet. And you give a URL pattern out here saying that you can access this hello, uh, hello servlet by using this particular pattern. Okay. That is your hello student. Uh, we've spoken about all these things, so not, not even uh, let's not even talk about this. So it has got a constructor, and you know what is the use of a constructor, right? And then you have got the service methods out here, all right? So you have got your do get or do post. We'll even talk about this soon, all right? So what am I going to do here is uh, whenever I just say sys out and just say I am here in do get right. Jiran, yeah. when you say super here it is going to execute the constructor of uh, http server yes super? it is going to invoke that those HTTP. yes okay. HTTP server. okay so as of now let me take this as of now and let me comment out all these things We'll talk about other things later. Okay, so I'm not going to have an init method because I'm not initializing anything out here. If you have an init method, that is going to be invoked very first. So let me just add this now. Okay, and just say here, sys out. Okay. So there are a couple of methods which I have already done. That is the first one is your init method, which is again for sure will be somewhere from your super classes. Okay. And then um, this method throws your servlet exception. We, we have to uh, have the same signature out here. And the same thing goes for your service method also. It's, it throws your servlet exception and IO exceptions. Okay. Now I'll just say here, copy this and paste it out here. Okay, so I'm in my 
service method. Now, what do I do in order to deploy this application? This is a Java file. Now, when you talk about HTML, this is, I, I very well uh, went to this properties, copied this particular HTML file, went back to the browser, I can even access it in this way, right? But what if I do it? I mean, uh, I just see hello H2K students in my browser, right? So what if I do it for this, right? Click properties and copy this, paste it here, right? So you just give, get the same file out here, right? You do not get the actual content or actual thing which you want to print uh, in, the, in the browser, okay? Now, let us first deploy this application, okay? Uh, in order to deploy this application, what I have to do, First, let me see if it is in appropriate place, Java build path. Make sure that your class file which got created, it has to go somewhere inside your WebINF. So this has to be changed for us. If you can see, it is somewhere in your, if I go back to the navigator, okay, if I go back to the navigator here, it is somewhere in my build folder here. Okay, which I do not want it. I want to create this particular class somewhere in my under your web banner. I need to have a folder. So I need to create a folder new folder and I'll just say as classes. So this is important for me. I cannot have anything as uppercase or I cannot have something as SS. It has to be classes. Okay, finish. So I have got uh, classes, I've got libraries and that's all. So I do not need this library, but I need these classes. So I want to push this particular class file to this class. I can even copy this and paste it here. The copy it from copy from here and paste it here. But I don't want to do it in that way. I just need to go to the properties and go to your uh, source. Go to your default output folder. Browse WebINF classes. Okay, okay, and say okay. Okay. So it is going to push all the files to your classes folder here okay so this is the structure you have to maintain now um, coming back okay so let us right now run this application okay so in order to run this application what I can do is right click run as run on server so when I say run on server it will basically ask me which server you want to run for I will just choose my Apache Tomcat okay all these things has been set up and I just say next, and this is my uh, project or the module which I have created, and this is what I want to deploy right now. And just say finish. Okay. So see something, some logs are getting uh, popped up, all right? And ultimately, if you go back to the console here, so if you see uh, the server got started up right here. Okay. And the moment the server gets started up, at the same time there is a folder which got created here. Okay, that is your servers. Now this is a, uh, the 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 uh, copy of what you have it in your Apache Tomcat. Basically, copies and keeps it in keeps creates your own folder and works out on this. Even though you do any changes out here, if you see uh, there are if you go back to the Apache Tomcat configuration, these are the list of files. If you do any changes here, it does not even get reflected here. It has its own structure. So from now, it is going to keep its own copy. And if you do want to do any changes. If you want to uh, change the uh, settings of your server, you can just go back and say 8081, okay? So you can just change it to 8080 here or 8082, it doesn't matter, okay? If you do any changes here, it does not even get reflected to this places, okay? It has its own, own copy. Now, go back uh, to here. Now, this is our root context. Let me copy this, Control X. Go back to the browser paste it here. So as of now, I'm not able to access anything even if I go back and try to get the URL pattern, right? So this is the URL with the help of which I can access this servlet. So come back here and just copy and paste it out here, right? So when you copy and paste it out something here, nothing is printed because of some reason, okay? Let's not even bother about that right now. Let us go back to the console. So you know that whenever you use the system dot order printer lens, something gets printed to the console itself, right? So that's what I've, we have been talking about in the very initial classes itself. Okay, now that's what it is getting printed out here in the console. 
where is the console okay let me just go from this right so it says i'm in the init method i'm in the service method why because your init method is the one which got invoked and your service method is the one which got invoked now let me again go back to the browser and do a hit enter here i come back so my expectation it it it, it is supposed to come back to the same java file again so you can see that i am in the service method now your init method did not get invoked only your service method is the one which is getting invoked every time okay now uh what am i do, going to do is i i just want to print something to the console right now okay so give me a sec so when i talk about printing something to the console that means i want to print sorry when i say printing something as sop it prints something to the console i want to print something to the browser right now so in order to print something to the browser i need a output string right so this is a request this is a response so let me just rename this to response and this as your request okay so with the help of my response i just say response dot get writer so this will basically give me a output stream so let me just say print writer out equals to response dot get writer i have to input this package so this package is somewhere from your input output okay now with the help of this what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say out dot print ln and say hello h2k folks time is new date okay so sql dot date okay so what am i doing the moment you access this particular service or particular servlet it is going to an if you see here or the moment i do any changes the the web pro servlet gets restarted again okay if i do any changes out here save it come on okay we'll see that usually it happens okay now okay it's it, it says it started again all right so let me go back to my browser so again if i hit it enter here i get something like hello h2k so let me just increase the fonts here so just say h2 or h1 so each and every time the server starts again your servlet gets initiated okay now come back here and just enter out here so what happens hello h2k folks time is so and so even if i refresh it right now i am getting a dynamic page so what do you do with the when you create a servlet you basically create a dynamic page okay so ultimate goal is the one which you did it using your html that is your hello.html you can write your entire piece of code i can just copy this and come back to my hello servlet i can push it out here okay how do i push that i have to say out.println okay and let's say this and this starts here and then this so everything has to be in your in this way right so i can very well copy everything and put it in in a proper format so that i basically create an html file so when i say create a html file now i what did i do i requested this particular from my browser i requested for this particular page right so this particular servlet that is a hello students so when i say hello students it basically if you go back to the diagram again from your browser that is from your browser you requested for a particular servlet right so your servlet got hit it did some processing and it gave a response back to you okay is did anyone does anyone has any problems right now in understanding this because if you understand this down the line everything will be pretty much easy for us is there any questions as of now from anyone yes servlet is nothing but is nothing but a java file itself but 
here we are not creating an instance of a servlet instead the container itself so when i talk about container the servlet the, the the web server has a container in which we are basically deploying our application okay it takes the responsibility of creating an instance of your particular servlet okay so where is the jsp page i see that you worked on the java file yeah this is the java file okay the java file ultimately gets you you're converting it to a class file and you are basically working on the class file itself okay now the ultimate goal out here if you want to print any kind of html files or if you want to uh, whenever you want to give a response back to the to the client or to the browser you can very well have a beautiful page or you want to create everything in your html and you can show it to the user okay so user in the sense show it to the browser here okay so here why it is coming this one because it had h2 out here All right so if i remove this so i had this html tag h1 for that reason i'm getting in the bold letters okay you can very well do all kind of html tags out here but the problem is if you are not an not a java developer but you are a very good html developer you will will you will never come back come to the servlet file and do any kind of manipulations here okay because you are a you are a html guy you are not a java folk okay so for that reason the jsp has uh, jsp has an advantage on top of it which we are going to learn in further classes okay so i'm going to stop the class here if anyone has any questions of what does the service method do and how is it any different from do get yeah adil will talk about uh, these do get and do post in the next sessions okay and uh, just stay tuned uh jeram yeah the web content i have a doubt like web content uh, is what it is the same as uh, uh, our uh, the the explorer something uh, you're talking about this one web content yeah web yeah it is actually we, when you talk no 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 mm -hmm. uh, no like uh, i'm sorry in the diagram in the diagram when you go back into mm -hmm. the diagram mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about the serverless okay. uh, the uh, the web content is the web form Uh, no okay in your server in your web server you have a web, you have a web container okay in the container mm -hmm. you basically deploy your application so your entire okay. application or uh, creating of an object destroying of an object is mm -hmm. somewhere present in the container itself okay okay, okay. and uh, can you give me a, an example of a web container what can be like in um, not getting some the concept about it like servlet is a program right right uh, okay so if i just give you a click quick picture out here i think we have still in the previous slides so this is my server okay in the server i'll be having a container okay and in that container you have all your servlets out here okay okay so whenever you send a request what basically happens it first hits a container and it go basically mm -hmm. goes uh, and checks whether any 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 particular servlet is present or not okay? okay so where do you have all these things if you see this the moment you created a servlet you give an annotation that is a, this is a web servlet okay? okay there was a traditional yeah. way of doing it uh, wherein we used to take the help of a web.xml file also so that was a very mm -hmm. traditional way of doing it but no one follows that because annotation has come into picture it is pretty much simple we, if i do the same thing if uh, i can show you an example uh, just a minute So if I want to do the same sort of example using my web.xml, what I have to do? If I remember the tags, servlet, servlet class, servlet name. Then where is that? servlet mapping servlet name mm -hmm. and the url pattern okay now in order to if i do not use this annotation in particular so mm -hmm. if you see here a lot of things i have to do here okay copy okay. this 
push this URL out here because this is my URL pattern. The servlet name is nothing but the complete qualified class name. Copy this, paste it out here. Sorry, paste it out here. Dot. So this is the traditional way of doing it. So no one follows this. Right. And I just say here as my servlet. If I use my servlet here, the same name I have to specify out here. Okay. Now okay. I'm done. So the same thing uh, in order to, uh, if I don't use this, I have to do it in this way. Right. So if okay. I run the same application right now, if I just close it and go back and okay, for now, let me just for the sake of doing some changes, I'll just give this as hello stud. Okay. So come back and right click run as run on server e, sorry wait let me just compile this okay so right click run as run on server just say next next finish everything is fine now just need not to access this just go and copy this and paste it out here sorry on this where is this hello student So it's all same, okay. but mm. as I said, this is your traditional way of doing it. Now you hardly see any applications following this one. And by the way, you hardly see anyone using directly servlets. Okay. Everybody will be using some kind of framework like spring MVC or struts, anything as such. Okay. No one follows, but understanding servlet is very important because that is the base. And if you do not understand your servlet, you will not be able to understand anything. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions, folks? Uh, if not, we'll just wind up and uh, meet up again tomorrow. Um, Jaira, one quick question. Yes, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Why Madhu has no questions as of now? <laughs> okay. Um, how do you define the application? Like, uh, what is the boundary? Is it a folder? Uh, I mean, how do you define the application? You can segregate. We will you do some sort of segregations also. If you see, this is just your hello.html, right? Now, right. Uh, I can even create a folder out here and say new uh, folder. And if suppose uh some sort of i need only html file which takes care of your calculation or takes care of your doing tax calculation okay so everything related to tax because as a whole uh, if you uh talk about your yahoo yahoo page yahoo page has got a lot of contents in it right it, it has got sports it has got uh, taxes it has got weather so you you want to have some kind of static pages or you want to basically segregate all the pages it is not a, about only one page right it is it is a bunch of pages so i say here tags so i just copy this and paste it out here okay so how do i access this i will again if i want i can rebuild otherwise let's see if i'm able to access this i will go back here and just say pepro tags slash what is it hello.html okay so that's what you have it. You can still segregate things. Okay. But again, the way we segregate your Java files, the same thing, you can even segregate your static pages also. All right. I, I see. So, so my question actually, I was trying to understand session information. Like each application should have its own session or something. Uh, uh, each, it session. Yes. Each application will be having its own. Uh, see, if you see, I can deploy a web pro as well as a Maven web pro in the same server but they both run on two different containers. Okay. Uh -huh. If they don't run on the same container, if I run this, uh, let's say right click run as run on server. So I just say next already my web pro is already present. I am deploying one more application right now. Restart. Okay. So in my web application, in my web server, I've got two containers right now. Okay. So I can just say here, if I'm not wrong, this is your, okay, this won't work as of now. I think I have time to do some settings as such, but ultimately you can create your web application. Two web applications can be deployed in the same server. Okay. They have got their own container and they have got their own sessions also, but still. So basically you, you, you differentiate uh, each application by having their own containers. Own root context. Yeah. They have their own okay. container, no doubt, but they have their own own root context also. Oh, okay, but still, and, when and, you talk and about the memory location is totally different and they, they cannot cross each other. And no, right, that's true. But again, there are few things that if there are uh, 
few applications wherein they want to interact with each other to to different continuous want to interact with each other for that reason they use a different tool okay so if you just try to google saml there's a there's a tool which basically tries to communicate between two containers or communicate between two sessions as well okay so i mean when there are complexities there are solutions for that okay hmm. all right uh, any other questions folks no questions uh, we'll talk tomorrow then thank you and and guys uh, please uh, don't forget to have some feedbacks uh, okay tell me anyone who has not even uh, uh, added a single feedback on me as well they can just type in privately also not a problem you can you guys can just say no yes anything as such because the the complete effort goes in vain if you do not give a feedback to me okay lydia says i did it twice i did once okay all right yeah if you guys uh, feel free you can do it once in a week as well so i would really appreciate that okay great thanks florence uh, okay did it okay all right i have got two madhus all right thanks madhu and thanks madhu yep thanks guys uh, meet you tomorrow then bye bye